Okay. Now, we will again start with the uh, we ended with the two parameters V max that is equal to K 2 into E 0 and we have K m that is equal to what we have uh, seen that K m is equal to K minus 1 plus K 2 divided by K 1 okay. and K m has a concentration unit. Okay concentration unit. Now, if you plot the initial velocity, if you suppose take various um, substrate concentrations, okay, keeping the enzyme concentration constant, suppose you have taken a constant concentration of an enzyme and you add different substrate concentration S 1, S 2, S 3 and determine the initial velocity for each of these reactions. Okay. You can determine and these initial velocities will be different for, for the, the different, uh, different values of S. Okay. Now, if you have many points like that S 3 then S 4 that means, you are slowly suppose increasing the substrate concentration okay. and you determine the initial velocity and then you plot the initial velocity with substrate concentration. So, what will happen that you will see that the velocity initially as you increase the substrate the velocity increases okay? because you have suppose the enzymes have mean there are many enzyme molecules which have these uh, active sites. So, initially the active sites are number of active sites are more than what is your substrate molecules. So, all substrate molecules will not fill up the active sites. Okay. The more active sites you fill, the more rate you will get. Okay. So, as you increase the substrate, then greater number of active sites starts filling up. So, the rate also increased, but this will happen up to a certain point. At some point, what will happen? Because your enzyme concentration is constant, all the active sites will be filled by the substrate molecules. So, beyond that if you increase the substrate concentration you will not get any rate enhancement. So, what so the nature of the graph will be like this that it increases and finally, slowly coming to a constant value okay. and uh, so suppose I extend it like this a constant value. So, this is the maximum velocity that you can get with a particular enzyme concentration maximum velocity V max. Okay. So, this is your V max. So, now you know this is what is called the saturation at this point the enzyme is saturated with the with the substrate like your saturated solution that you add sodium chloride to water. If your water content is fixed then after certain point the sodium chloride will not dissolve any further. It is very similar to that. So, that is why this is called saturation of the enzyme. This is your V max that V max depends on what? Depends on your initial enzyme concentration. If you vary the initial enzyme concentration, your value of V max will also change. Okay. Now, we have earlier told that K m is nothing but equal to the substrate concentration required to reach half of V max. Substrate concentration to reach half of V max. So, what you do? Once you know the V max, now you see what is the half of V max. So, this is half of V max. So, now you draw a line here and then see what is the value in the x axis. So, that gives you what is this value of S is equal to what is K m. Okay. So, that that is there. Now, that is how you determine the K m. Now, what is the significance of K m? K m can be defined in two ways. One is K m is, is basically the ratio of these rate constants. On the other hand, you can define it as the substrate concentration required to reach half of the V max. Okay. Both are correct, but uh, both are important, but let us analyze this part first. What happens in enzyme catalysis is usually that as you add the substrate, the enzyme and the substrate they uh, after few minutes quickly 
adopt an equilibrium stage. That means, that E s complex the steady state complex uh, is reached very quickly uh, and that is because k 1 and k minus 1 are much higher than the value of your k 2. K 2 is the rate constant for the decomposition of E s into the product, which is actually much less as compared to the these values k minus 1 and the rate constants for the formation of the E s complex and the rate constant for the breakdown of the E s complex. So, this these are uh, much higher than k 2. So, that means, you can now summarize it uh, you can simplify it in little that k m is approximately equal to k minus 1 by k 1. What is that k minus 1 by k 1? k minus 1 by k 1 is your reaction is nothing but E plus S going to E S and that is going to E plus P. This is the reaction scheme. So, this is k 1 and this is k minus 1. So, k my usually k 1 by k minus 1 is the equilibrium constant if we consider from left to right. Now, here it is k minus 1 divided by k 1 that means, it is the dissociation constant now. Earlier k 1 by k minus 1 was basically association. Now, k minus 1 by k 1 is the dissociation constant of the E s complex. So, that means, k m is also roughly equal to the dissociation constant of the E s complex. What does it mean then? Is higher k m better for enzyme efficiency or lower k m better for enzyme efficiency? Now, one thing is clear that more the concentration of this E s, the higher will be the because k 2 is the formation of the rate of formation of the product is basically k 2 into E s. So, the, if you have high concentration of E s, if you can maintain higher concentration of E s in the system, then you will have higher turnover of E s into the product. Okay. Now, if the dissociation of E s to E plus S is very high, that means the association is low, that means your E s concentration is low, that means your rate of the reaction will ultimately will be low. So, the enzyme will be less efficient. The, and the, on the other hand, if K m is low, that means your dissociation is low and your association is high. If that be the case, that means your turnover to the product will be ultimately higher. So, for an enzyme reaction k m is very important lower k m means lower k m means higher binding or tighter binding higher binding constant. Okay. So, k m you see the same parameter can be defined in several ways that k m is the dissociation constant of the E s complex or k m is the substrate concentration to reach half of the V max. Okay. Okay, now, how do you really prove that the Michaelis maintain equation is correct? Hmm. As I said the earlier graph was not a linear graph, huh? it, it took a shape like this. So, so, it is very difficult to really plot a graph which is not linear. What actually we try to do always is to have a linear graph. So, we convert the equation in such a fashion that the ultimately when we plot the, plot the x and y, then it gives a linear, it gives a straight line and that is much better because straight lines you can confidently confidently draw if your points are within a straight line. If they stray away a little bit like in the earlier case, it is really difficult to draw this uh, experimentally it is difficult. So, always there is an attempt to, to, uh, to uh, represent an equation in such a form that ultimately when we plot x and y it gives a linear graph and that is what is done by from the same equation 
if you take 1 by v 0. So, that becomes 1 by v max that means, it is s by s v max s and s crosses out. So, this is 1 by v max and this becomes k m by v max into 1 by s. This is what is called the this gives you a double reciprocal plot because what you are plotting now if you plot 1 by v 0 versus 1 by s now what will happen now that will be linear because this is now y equal to m x plus c that form. So, now you get a straight line and this straight line what is the value here value of of the x axis here that will be equal to minus 1 by k m because here what here your uh, your 1 by v 0 is becoming 0 that means, you put 0 equal to 1 by v max plus k m by v max into 1 by s. So, if you solve this you will get that s equal to because your v max v max will cancel out. So, if you solve this s becomes equal to minus 1 by k m k m. Okay. So, that means, this intercept is the is minus 1 by k m the minus value comes because it is on the other side of the x axis. Okay. So, experimentally how to determine k m that you take the enzyme concentration constant and add the substrates in different concentrations in different test tubes and measure the initial rate and then you plot 1 by v 0 that means, 1 by initial rate and the 1 by against the each uh, substrate concentration, but take a double reciprocal this is what is called a double reciprocal plot or it is also known as the the, the scientists who did this the showed the way how to determine uh, or how to convert Michaelis maintain equation into a linear form. So, that is also called line weaver bark plot okay. and this uh, and this one this intercept is basically 1 by v max here you put 1 by s equal to 0. So, that will give the y axis y is equal to 1 by v max and the slope is nothing but this k m by v max. So, by doing these type of experiments means determining the initial velocity at different substrate concentration at a particular uh, enzyme concentration you can determine this v max and the k m these are the two extremely important parameters for the equation. Now, factors affecting enzyme catalyzed reaction one as I said enzyme concentration the more enzyme you have the the more uh, the greater will be the rate of the reaction substrate concentration. It depends on the substrate concentration, but you have to be careful after beyond a particular substrate concentration you cannot increase the rate of the reaction, because you will reach the saturation point that is the at that point the velocity is what is called v max. Temperature also plays a part, because the enzyme works when it is in the native state if you apply some energy some heat energy to the enzyme. So, there will be some unfolding will take place or if you apply some salts into the solution some unfolding will take place or if you change the pH that also disturbs the conformation of the enzyme. So, all these things will uh, will dictate or the we can say that the enzyme efficiency uh, will be dependent on these parameters temperature pH presence of hydrogen bonding disrupt hydrogen bond disrupting agent like urea urea is very simple molecule CO NH 2 NH 2, but that is uh, that has got hydrogen bond donor and acceptor and that is a very good uh, molecule to disrupt the hydrogen bonds that are present in a protein. So, if you add urea the protein slowly denatures the hydrogen bonds get uh, breakage and also sometimes or on many occasions there are other small molecules which look like the substrate, but they are not actually substrate for the enzyme, but they go and sit and cover the and cover the or do not make available the active site. So, if you do that then the 
uh, then some active sites will be lost by the presence of those small molecules which are called inhibitors. So, inhibitors are small molecules basically that slows down the enzyme kinetics. So, these are the different parameters. Now, uh, one more point. So, K m when we say that factors affecting enzyme catalyzed reactions that means, these are the ones which affect the K m and the V max. These are the ones which ultimately how do you know that the enzyme efficiency has gone down. So, you have to measure the K m and the V max then you will know that yes something is happening uh, there is a slowing down of the rate. So, now the one interesting point is that if you if you in the question is K m is dependent on temperature that is ok, it is dependent on pH that is also fine. It is suppose you do not add any other organic molecule. So, no inhibitor is there. So, it is dependent on these dependent on pH it depends on some on, on the ionic strength of the solution that is also fine, but the question now is does K m depend on the initial enzyme concentration or not. Because K m can be defined as the concentration to reach half of the V max. Okay. So, if we increase the enzyme con suppose I have a particular enzyme concentration E 1 where this is the graph suppose. So, this is the V max then this is the V max and half V max is this this is half V max. So, that means, the K m is this. Now, if we increase the enzyme concentration so, what will happen? Definitely the V max will increase because you have more number of active sites. So, you can have more substrates now. So, the value of V max will also increase. So, V max will definitely increase, but interestingly what will happen? Suppose the V max now increases and goes to that point. Suppose this is the area. this is now the new V max, but if you calculate half of V max you will see that it will cut at the same it will give the same value of K m. So, again I repeat V max will change as you change the enzyme concentration, but the concentration to reach half of the V max still remains the same. Okay, the concentration needed to reach the half of V max remains the same. So, K m is independent of the enzyme concentration. Okay. Now, if we want to really go into the molecular more details that how enzymes catalyze a reaction because what we have seen earlier is really not at the molecular level we are thinking. We have a very broad perspective a cartoon type diagram and then an equation and then solve the equation find the parameters, but the more intricate details is how the enzymes catalyze the reaction what really happens there. Uh, because we have seen that substrate goes binds, but something happens to the substrate how the enzyme is able to do that carry on that. Okay. Now, we will just show here the mechanism of one protease which we have already encountered and that is called chemotrypsin. Remember what is chemotrypsin? Chemotrypsin is an enzyme which recognizes amino acids or which cleaves peptide bonds from the carboxy end when there is uh, aromatic amino acids present in the system in the in the peptide bond. Okay. So, that means, if you have a peptide bond like this C O N H and this is the peptide and this is the peptide. So, here there must be some aromatic group and that is what is needed. So, the peptide bond that is broken is this one. So, that is what is chemotrypsin. Now, the question is in order to hydrolyze a peptide bond what is needed that you have to have water and that ultimately has to come here and break it, but that does not happen. It is not so simple that if you take a protein and dissolve it in water 
the protein never hydrolyzes okay and that is very good because if proteins are hydrolyzed then our body will be so fragile all the proteins will be hydrolyzed okay so that does not happen fortunately to have this hydrolysis by water to happen what you need is um, is some other nucleophile which can attack this carbonyl and then ultimately break this bond and then the nucleophile is released later on by water. So, that is what is the um, what is that is what is the mechanism of the the protease class of molecules. Now, there are different actually there are different proteases proteases again I repeat they are the enzymes which hydrolyzes the peptide bond. Okay. There are the different types of protease depending on this nucleophile. I said the enzyme must be having some nucleophile which is attacking the which is a much better nucleophile than water. Water is not a good nucleophile. What is good nucleophile is which minus, but in the biological system at biological pH 7 or 7.2 you do not have this alkalinity which is needed to hydrolyze the peptide bond. Okay. Instead, the enzyme provides the nucleophile. So, internally it attacks and then this breaks and then finally, water comes and releases the x again. So, that this is this goes out and then uh, another molecule comes in. Now, depending on the nature of a x you have different types of proteases. One is called serine protease. Serine protease where x is basically an amino acid, uh, an amino acid containing x means x is OH, because we are talking about serine. What is serine? OH like this, okay. NH and CO. This is what is serine. So, serine OH is the nucleophile and then if serine which is the nucleophile by which that hydrolyzes the peptide bond then those class of enzymes are called serine proteases. Similarly, we have SH here instead of which you can have SH and those are called cysteine proteases because SH comes from only cysteine. A third one where you do not have internal nucleophile like this, but what the enzyme provides is is a metal ion because you know that many of the addition to the carbonyl compounds are assisted by acids like lewis acids there are many reactions which are assisted by lewis acids which activates the carbonyl okay similarly metal lewis acids are nothing but you have a metal a metal halide say aluminum chloride okay, or boron trifluoride. What happens because of the vacancy uh, because of the uh, not the octet structure it has not fulfilled the octet structure. So, these are got very good Lewis acid character BF 3 or ALCL 3. Now, in case of um, enzyme hydrolysis this also can be achieved by simple metal ions like suppose M plus which is a zinc say. So, oxygen will kill it to the zinc as soon as oxygen kill it to the zinc what happens this the electrophilicity of this carbon increases. Okay. So, now in presence of metal ions you do not need any other nucleophile other than the actual nucleophile that what you require that is water. So, in presence of metal water can come attack this this is assisted by the metal ion. Now, who is holding this metal ion? The enzyme is holding the metal ion. So, metal ion becomes the cofactor in that case. So, metal ion activates the carbonyl water comes and breaks the amide bond. So, direct these are called metalloproteases. So, we have serine protease, metalloprotease and then um, cysteine protease, but there is another category that is called the aspartyl protease. What is aspartyl protease? Where again that is um, again that is the catalyzed directly water comes and attacks the carbonyl. 
Okay. Again, I come to the again going back to what I have said that when you have a bond, if you want to break a bond involving a carbonyl, I have two options. One is either use a powerful nucleophile to attack the electrophilic carbonyl carbon, break the carbon nitrogen bond, or I can activate the oxygen through some processes like metal ion and then water comes and attacks. Now, if the metal if instead of metal ions if this is a proton because you know many of the again the carbonyl reactions addition of DNP, hydrazine all these are catalyzed by acids because the acid protonates the carbonyl and the nucleophile is a hydrazine or a phenyl hydrazine semicarba, uh, semicarbazide all these can attack very easily. Now, who will provide this acid again the enzyme because the enzyme can have aspartic acid where there is H plus. So, the aspartic acid proton can protonate a carbonyl of an amide bond and then water can come and hydrolyze the amide. So, these are the four classes. In one classes you are have direct attack by water which is assisted by chelation of the carbonyl oxygen either to metals in case of metalloproteases and in case of uh, aspartyl protease the aspartic acid provides the proton source to protonate the carbonyl and then allow the water to attack the carbonyl and so the carbon nitrogen bond is broken. This is one side and on the other side you have a good nucleophile present in the enzyme and that comes and as it is a good nucleophile. So, that attacks the carbonyl and this amide bond leaves, but in that case you see there is a covalent bond formation between the enzyme and the and the carbonyl carbon. Okay. So, the enzyme is momentarily stuck with the with the re remaining part of the protein and that is called the acyl enzyme complex. So, the acyl enzyme complex will next be hydrolyzed then water will come and break the acyl enzyme complex and you get your nucleophile back and the result is that you have done the hydrolysis of the peptide bond. Okay. In the next session uh, what we will st we'll start from here, but we will raise the question. The question is that what is a good nucleophile in, in enzymes, because enzymes do not have nucleophiles like cyanide a good nucleophile, a good nucleophile like iodide that is not there or hydroxide that is also not there. So, what is the good nucleophile in case of enzyme? We said that there is a class which is serine protease and chemotrypsin in, in fact is a serine protease type enzyme. Serine is nothing but an amino acid containing an alcoholic OH. The question is alcoholic OH is it sufficiently nucleophilic to hydrolyze a peptide bond? To, uh, in order to answer that what you need to do? I say, let us check I take a peptide and add some methanol because that also have alcoholic OH, but nothing happens. Okay. If you add ethanol nothing happens. So, no alcohol can hydrolyze a peptide bond. So, the biggest challenge that was posed at that time when it was discovered that serine protease utilizes serine as the nucleophile and hydrolyze the peptide bond. Then the big question came that how is it possible that serine can attack a carbonyl and break a carbon nitrogen bond. Okay. So, we will stop here and we will start from this how the serine that means there is again a question of activation of the nucleophile. The power of the nucleophile has to increase so that it can attack the carbonyl. Okay. So, we will start from there that how the serine is activated and ultimately that leads to the attack of the to the carbonyl. Okay. Thank you.